Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are going to do my reading wrap up for the month of August. So here's my reading journal. Look how thick it is. I've got the one ready for next year. I haven't set it up yet, but it's exactly the same book. You can see how thick it is compared to it when you do it. So I am just going to go through the books I read in August. The first book I read was Gerald O'Donovan's The Long Silence, a 1920s Hollywood noir mystery. So this basically tells the story of a private detective who worked for the movie studios in the 20s. This is obviously a fiction and is set during the time of the murder of William Desmond Taylor. Um, he is hired by Max Sennett to track down Mabel Normand who has gone missing. Mabel Normand was the last person to see um, William Desmond Taylor alive other than the killer. Um, and she was a suspect for a while in, in truth. So in this one, it's an interesting book, but it didn't do enough with the William Taylor Desmond, Desmond Taylor aspect of the, the story. It got really weird um, with these gangsters and stuff. And I did enjoy it and I gave it three stars, but I thought it could have been better. Uh, it, it's just not as good as I was hoping. I guess. So I also read Later by Stephen King. This is from the three box set hard case crime novels he wrote uh, in the uh, pulp fiction style. Um, so this one is uh, about uh, Jamie Conklin who can see the dead but he just wants to be a normal child. So yeah it's it's quite a weird story he sees dead people his mother is a, a literary agent and her big star writer dies before he finishes his last book which ties up his series so her and her girlfriend who is a police officer take Jamie to where he died so that they can get the story and he does but then of course her girlfriend and her they do split up for various reasons but she kidnaps Jamie um, the police officer and takes him to trace down a serial killer I think it was a serial killer or a killer who threatened to strike from beyond the grave so I gave it four stars it was a really interesting read it's not a very long book for Stephen King these aren't very long books they're great because they're like, really nice and short but it was only 248 pages so and it's different it's still is it's crime but it's still got a supernatural twist to it and these do and that's what I like about it it gives it a Stephen King twist so I did enjoy that one then I read the first of several I think it was four Ripper books I read in August I went a bit Ripper mad and the first one I read was Jack the Ripper the final chapter by Paul H Feldman this is a book that's um revolves around the May James Maybrick theory that James Maybrick was Jack the Ripper based on a diary that was found in the 90s I believe um there are several books about this another one's coming out very soon at the convention um whether or not you believe James Maybrick was the Ripper or not is an interesting read I, I don't know um generally it's, it's perceived that the the Ripper diary is a fraud it's a forgery um and it is very likely to be because you know but it is an interesting read I think it's quite a chunky book I gave it four stars because it was a good read and I'm not saying that he was the ripper but I enjoyed the book his wife is far more interesting then I read where is it the things we never say by Sheila O'Flanagan I can't even find it it was here it was in my pile I got so many books is it over here nope Anyway, The Things We Never Say by Sheila Flanagan, which was a good book. I did enjoy it. I just don't know what, where it's gone. Um, what have we got? Abby Anderson discovers that she has a grandfather in Ireland and he leaves the bulk of his estate to her and her mother. Uh, the rest of his family are not pleased except for his daughter Suzanne. So from what I remember, Abby's mother is uh, has become a nun um, so she doesn't have any personal things. The family want to keep the the estate especially the brothers the older brothers should be theirs Abby doesn't care one way or another so I enjoyed it I gave it four stars and I'm sorry I just don't know where the book's gone 
I seem to have uh, misplaced certain things and let's put those in there. Grabbed other things for some reason. But yeah, it was, an it was a good book. Oh, another one of my favourite writers. And I know that one's here. Caitlin Doughty. It's the last book of hers about death. From here to eternity, travelling the world to find the good death. Um, so basically she goes around exploring different death cultures from around the world. So, you know, whereas we have, and America has this, where we hide the bodies and bury them as quickly as we can and we don't really think about it. There are other cultures where they live with their dead and they bring them out every year and, and have parties with them and so on. I do find it fascinating um, and it's helped me come to terms with my own mortality. Uh, so she's really good. She has a YouTube channel as well. So if you are interested, if you don't, you know, before you pick up one of these books, go check it out. It's called Ask a Mortician. Five stars, obviously. A, another Jack the Ripper book I read this month, you would have seen it in my haul, Hand of a Woman uh, by John Morris. Now, a book came out a few years ago about Sir John Williams who founded the Library of Wales in Aberystwyth, claiming that he was Jack the Ripper because he was having an affair with Mary Kelly um, and his wife was infertile and he was killing them because he wanted to use their uteruses to try and find out and solve the mystery of why his wife was infertile. Whether or not this is, you know, is another suspect, is another one of the millions of suspects we've got. However, in this book it turns it on its head. Instead of John Williams being the killer, it says that his wife, Lizzie, was the killer instead. So there you are, I've told you the end. No, I'm not, because it tells you this from the very beginning that it's Lizzie. And it goes on to explain why it was Lizzie, that he was having an affair with Mary Kelly. She was jealous. Mary Kelly could have children. She couldn't. Obviously, they blame her, the, the fact they couldn't have a child on her, whereas it could have been him that was the problem. We don't know, because he never had any children either. Might well have been his issue, not hers. But of course, in those days, it was always the woman's fault. So it was an interesting read. I gave it three stars. Another Ripper book, there's a lot of Ripper books this month, if I can find it, was this one. Got a lot going on my shelves. This is The Policeman, a new suspect by Rod Beatty, in which he claims that a policeman, whose name I can't remember, have I written it down? No. Was the Ripper, um, because he, Endicott, PC Endicott, he got into trouble in... Uh, Somerset or Devon where he was in the police who resigned and moved to London and joined the Met where he arrested a woman named Cass Miss Cass Elizabeth Cass uh, claiming that she was a prostitute now whether or not she was we don't know this book seems to infer that she was um, and she claimed she wasn't soliciting she was just she'd just gone out to have a look at the lights and buy some um, some gloves or whatever from her job and that she was only only just left and that she was working with a tailor a female dressmaker again that's what they usually call prostitutes um, however there's no real evidence I gave it three stars because it's an interesting read and there's always a possibility that Ripper could have been a, a police officer. The idea being that at the end of the, the Miss Cass case, he was demoted. He was taken off of active duty and relegated to being a security card, basically, at the British Museum. However, he was kept in reserve and when the Ripper murders occurred, he was pulled back into active service and hence why he was around at the time but there's just it's very slim volume there's no real evidence in it but it's still it's an interesting concept that it could have been the police uh echoes of distant water again you saw this in my haul this is the jb fisher's take on the disappearance of the martin family back in 1958 i didn't really get the conspiracy theory about going all the way to the kennedys in washington i didn't really understand that there's a lot of supposition in here where he actually describes somebody hiding in their car and coming out and, and and making them drive somewhere. There's no evidence to suggest that because the car's never been found. 
Um, so a lot of it is supposition. It's still very interesting. There's a lot of really good detail in here that makes it a fascinating story. Uh, there's the family there. And if you're in Portland, Oregon, you would, I would imagine you would know this story. Um, very tragic. And yeah, it does leave you wondering what did happen to them? Was they, were they murdered? It's possible. Possible they were, of course it's possible. Were they murdered? What happened? I, you know, inquiry minds would like to know. I would love to know what happened to them. I wish they could find out. Um, maybe one day, you never know. I gave it four stars, so it was a really good read. Then we had our classic for the month which should be here somewhere uh, yeah here it is and it was Charles Dickens Hard Times I love the cover so Hard Times basically is the story of these two children who uh, grow up in a family where you're not allowed to be basically children you can't play you can't have fun you can't have an imagination everything has got to be facts 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 and nothing more um, a girl from a circus joins the family um, she's not very intelligent and she can't learn just facts because her imagination is far too great and she's a great support to these two two kids as they grow up things change she marries the girl marries um somebody her father approves of who's a lot older than her again he's all about facts 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 and the only reason she marries him is to keep an eye on her brother who is working for him that's the general consensus now her brother gets into a lot of trouble with drinking and gambling and Oh, it all goes downhill from there. He steals some money, gets blamed on somebody else. Um, and in the end, he flees the country, leaves the country. Um, and she goes back to living with their father, who realises he was wrong about the facts, facts, facts. And that perhaps he should have been a bit more lenient and let them have fun and be children. Um, classic, classic Charles Dickens. I'm going to read another one. I'm going to read Christmas Carol at Christmas, definitely. So there's that one. And I gave that one four stars. Uh, Peter James Blowback, Enzo, story, can't think of his surname, McLeod. Um, so this one is the story of uh, Francis, most celebrated chef who is murdered um, before he could make the revelation of his career. Um, it's seven years on and Enzo McLeod is going to try and th solve it because this is um, case five in the seven uh, that are mentioned in Ruffin's book and it's about the phrase family history who could have killed this chef Mark who has three Michelin stars a four star read I love these Peter May books they're absolutely fantastic next we read The House Across the Street by Leslie Pierce this is a good one my mum's going to enjoy this one so this is the story about Katie and her family. So Katie and her family live across from another house. There's a, it's 1964, there's a lot going on in this house. People come and, and go and they wonder what's going on. Mysterious women arriving, excuse me, on, on a Saturday. But one night, this house owned by this woman named Gloria burns down and Katie's father is blamed for it. He is, the murder's pinned on him by the real murderer. So. Katie, who is about to move to London to work, is determined to prove his innocence and find out what happens. So basically, Gloria and her friend were helping battered women back in the time when there was no uh, law for it, no help for them. It was all, yeah, it's just tough. It's domestic. We're not getting involved. Now, of course, it's still not treated seriously enough, but it is a lot better. Um, and giving them new names and hiding them and helping them move away from their uh, abusive husbands. So that's the backstory with them. But I'm not going to tell you more because I don't want to read it because it was really good. I gave it four stars. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely amazing book. I read another non-fiction book, uh, which is one that Paul bought back in January, um, which is What Lies Buried by uh, Kerry Dane. So she's a profiler, criminal profiler. And she basically tells us about the people she's worked with. So uh, a young murderer says he hears voices is telling him to kill. A teacher who daubs children in red paint and an aspiring serial killer who faints at the sight of blood. I don't think he's going to do very well. Every single one of these people I empathised with. 
because she went into their backstory and that's something we never hear about when you hear about this killer who does this or this abuser who does that you don't hear their backstory there's one story about a load of drug addicts in a rehab center um and this one really stuck with me and she walked in and the first thing she noticed was all the staff were white and all the inmates were black um but it's a fascinating story of how this, particularly one of these people went on and had a good life afterwards and that it, it's, it gives you hope. I gave that five stars, it was an amazing book, amazing read, so I really recommend picking that up. Another book I really enjoyed was Mabel Norman, The Life and Career of a Hollywood Ma Madcap by Timothy Dean uh, Leffler. So this is basically the story of the silent film comedian Mabel Norman, who was the longtime girlfriend of Max Sennett. They had an on again, off again relationship. The night before they were due to get married, she caught in bed with uh, another actress named Mae Bush and May Bush threw a vase at her and clonked her on the head and this is where they believe her cocaine addiction came from because she took it for the pain. She also had tuberculosis which in those days was an absolute killer. It's a tragic story. Um, there was of course there was so much going on. She was friends with Fatty Arbuckle who had his own problems with the Virginia Rappe case, um, William Desmond Taylor's murder and on. Now I gave this five four stars because I know that it's not 100% there are mistakes in it. Now how do I know there are mistakes in it? Because her great nephew and I can't it's Stephen Normand he has a YouTube channel has said that it's a very good biography it's a brilliant book but there are mistakes in it and, and I would say that he would know he owns her her diaries 16 years worth of her diaries and is planning on all, or is writing his own biography on it. I hope he does. I would love to read it. I love, he's a lovely guy. He actually lives in the UK. He's a reverend. He seems like such a nice person. Um, he's very protective of his Aunt Mabel. And he calls her Aunt Mabel. I think it's lovely. I'm glad she's got family out there. Protect her. I really do. I think it's just wonderful. Yeah, so, but I, I would recommend it. It's a really interesting read. It gives you a real insight into the movie making of the 1920s of the silent era. It's absolutely fantastic. Like I said, four star read from me. Uh, then I read um, a book by one of my favourite authors, which is Lisa Jewell, and this is The Invisible Girl. This tells the story of a girl named Sapphire Maddox. Something terrible happened to her when she was a child and she goes into counselling. Her counsellor doesn't really get to the bottom of why she was in pain. Um, however, you know, well, that's what happens. Owen Pick is also invisible. He's never had a girlfriend and he's in his 30s. He lives with his aunt. And one night, Sapphire goes missing. Now, Sapphire goes missing for a reason. And we will find out. I'm not going to tell you the reason. She's not dead, but they do suspect she's dead and they believe Owen might have killed her. Now, Owen lives opposite the man who was her counsellor and his wife and Sapphire has been following him and watching what's been going on within that family dynamic. Um, there is an, a, a wasteland, a lot next door where the house has been demolished ready for development, hasn't been development and there's foxes there and she becomes friends with this fox and she does become friends in a way with Owen whose name is, who she calls Clive. Um, but she does come back and Owen realised that part of his loneliness is his fault, that he does treat women not in a necessarily nice way, but he does go on a course and get help for it. He goes back to his job, which was as a college lecturer. He realises that he was wrong. And it's a really good story in which there's no murders. And for Lisa Jewell, that's unusual. But I really enjoyed this one and I gave it four stars. I read the second book. In the Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Now, having a look if I can find it. How much did I give the original? Oh, there it is. I gave the first one four stars and I gave the second one four stars. So in this one, her friend Jamie goes missing. She doesn't want to take on the case after all everything that happened in the first one. She, you know, she got into a lot of trouble. She's nearly killed and so on. Uh, but Jamie's parent mother absolutely begs for it. His father doesn't believe it because he's disappeared before the police won't do anything because again he's disappeared before and he's an adult however she does track down the reason why he's gone missing and also um 
a very sad case of somebody she knows who's not all they are meant to be there's somebody in witness protection um I, this book is these books are so good they are so well written they are so enjoyable i can see why tiktok and youtube have blown up over these they're absolutely fantastic love it a reread terry pratchett sorcery the eighth son of an eighth son becomes a wizard if that eighth son then stops being a wizard and gets married and has eighth son that eighth son becomes a source of magic sorcerer sorcery once the disc was full of sorcerers um but the gods did away with them because the magic was too great the things from the dungeon dimensions were getting through the world was not made for sorcery however coin comes along and he's a sorcerer his father ipsilor the red has put himself in his staff that uh, and coin has the staff he makes a deal with death that he will only let coin go when coin throws away his staff which is something a wizard never does I love this book again it's a four star read from me two more to go Marilyn my Marilyn by Art Johnson um, you saw this in the hall um, a journalist writes um, a review of Carl Sandburg's poems Marilyn complimenting on it wants him to write a story and basically it tells the story of that and then on the Black Dahlia stuff as well comes into it and she leaves him a message not the Black Dahlia Marilyn in her piano it's an interesting read there are obviously a lot of fictional elements in here um, including her press people and lawyers and stuff like that so I enjoyed it I gave it three stars it's not the best fictional Marilyn book I've read but it's a very good one it's worth picking up it's not expensive that so eight quid and the final book I read is here somewhere and it was the fifth victim and I only gave this one star so this is saying that this woman claims she is the great great granddaughter or the great granddaughter of Mary Jane Kelly who was the Jack the Ripper's fifth victim there's no evidence to show that again this is the the Williams theory that John Williams Dr John Williams was the Ripper this is the guy that uh, formed the uh, Library of Wales in Aberystwyth um, and that he killed them and then she claims that the fifth victim Mary Jane Kelly or Mary Kelly uh, wasn't her Mary Kelly it was another another prostitute using the same name uh, because she liked her grandmother's name and it gets very confusing so not the best some nice photographs of um, Lizzie Williams and John Williams and the knife that they say the reason is that there is a, a, a sharp a, a, a knife with a broken tip that they say was his uh, that, that he used to kill these women and also that uh, there are some slides in the Williams collection that they don't know whether they're human animal or or plant uh, that could be slides from the victims but why would he you don't know he may have kept the knife because it was the first one he ever used in surgery or something like that or was given to him by somebody we don't know um but yeah not a, not a, yeah i can see why the ripperologist uh, faction think this is a ridiculous book because it really really is there's just no evidence and that is the most important thing is evidence so those are the 18 books i read in august i'll do it again in september i have less than 50 books to go to hit my Goodreads challenge I'm going to do it quite easily I believe um but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and what I think of these books have you read any what do you think uh, let me know in the comments below and I will see you again soon bye everyone